कृष्ण की शादी में है Hey y'all, you hear me? Hey Bertie. Hey. Y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ew. How y'all feeling tonight? Ready to get into some things. I know that's right. Well, this is the introduction to, to the actual work. Um, on this slide, matter of fact, I'm gonna put the actual link to the curriculum if you wanna do work without me or whatever, that type of thing. But I'm gonna make sure that y'all are able to follow up, follow with me at any point. Um, yeah, because it's important that y'all get into some things. All right, now. So I'm going to share my screen, but have me in it. I am never good at this whole thing. I can't get good at the slide business. We still keep adding people. I have to manually add you to the room. So I was like, wait, what's going on? So yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Please be patient with me. I know I said for y'all to be on time so that I could start on time. Okay. All right. Now I know what to press. Perfect. Okay, y'all. So um, anytime I have to usually stop, it's because I have to manually enter, like let people in the room. So that's how it's gonna go. But yeah, I'm excited about this because this is stuff that, you know, we, we need to get into. So let's get into it. Let's make sure I'm set up so I don't be looking crazy. But yes, all right. I'm gonna, yep. So since this is a presentation, um, the questions are gonna be at the end. What's on one? Yes, we're gonna have the question and answer anything that y'all wanna ask me or whatever is at the end. This is only about uh, about shadow work, and yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So I'm gonna start by, oh wait, somebody said something. Oh, any questions that you have? Hey, beautifuls. Um, any questions that you have, just put it in the chat for me and I promise we will get to everybody's questions. That I promise. We will not end until we finish, until we get everybody's questions. But I'm not gonna open the chat yet, but just put your questions in there when you have them. And um, I'll make a little bit of a reminder before we get really into this. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so, yeah. Okay, so this is the introduction to shadow work. And I'm gonna change that view, speaker view. Okay, I need everybody on mute. All right. So, wait, is everybody on mute? Okay. So, as you can tell, the class is Inner Work for Your Shadow Self. Who is this class for? Of course, I have to get this out of the way. It's for people who are trying to figure out why they do the things that they do. Why do they let people treat them the way that they do? Why do you love who or the way that you do? And why are you stuck or feeling stuck? What is shadow work? Now, I will open up the, the chat for this. So everybody can unmute. Just let me know what you think that shadow work is.
Um, hi, everybody. My name is Kayla. Um, so to me, um, shadow work is just being conscious and being aware of what's going on in your mind, um, whether it be positive or negative. Um, and just, yeah, like being aware about those things and, and learning how to control them. Um, so that's what I think that is, shadow work. Very great. That was a great description. Thank you. That was a great description. So, of course, we don't want to get trapped in the ways that we're actually doing things. So, getting to the nitty gritty of what it is that we, or why we do the things that we do. Yeah, we don't want to get stuck there. So, let's see here. We got another person in there. So. Okay, so why is this important? First of all, who am I? Because, um, yeah, you never get over when someone asks you who you or what your credentials for a thing. So I will let you know, if y'all already know, I am Birdie. But I'm also uh, an author and publisher of 28 books in the self-help, self-love genre. I am an inspirational speaker. So I say inspirational because inspiration is when you bring people from, from down here to, to up here. You, you inspire people from within. Motivational speakers is pretty much like you're stopped and I have to motivate you to move. And there is a, there's a huge difference. So I call myself an inspirational speaker. And I've been a book and life co lifestyle coach for over 20 years. 20 years I've been doing this. And so, um, yeah, I know what I'm doing, y'all. And I'm a mother of a son, my son, Bam. So, yeah, he's my motivation as to why shadow work and helping other people is so important to me. I want to make sure that he has that example so when it's a, a place where, you, where you're coming from of inspiration, because I mean, sometimes you got to be your own inspiration. Most of the time, you got to be your own inspiration. And we're going to get from the point of where we are at the source of who we are to moving forward, because we want to be better for our future, whether it's the future of our kids or the future of ourselves, because we don't want to get stuck. So let's see. Who is ready? Okay, house rules. Again, questions are only in the chat or the comments. Y'all can make comments, you can make chats, but we're gonna keep ourselves unmuted until I ask questions for the floor or, you know, the end when we have questions. And I, I know that we all understand that. Oh, also at the bottom of, this, of each slide is going to have the actual link to the book if you want to get the book from now to saturday yeah from now to saturday i'm sorry i'm doing recording um from now to saturday it's going to be 25 dollars. but after that the book is going back up to 59 and it's a download so if you want it the link is at the bottom from now to sun to saturday is 25 dollars. so this is the book that tells you you know how to do um, shadow work. So this is the free introduction right here. And um, yeah, we're going to get into it. So now we are going to stop sharing the screen and y'all gonna see me. Oh, I got to let some more people in the room. I love that everybody's coming in to join us. I just wanted to repeat, anybody have any questions? We holding them off to the end and yeah, just making sure they're in the room at the end. And if there are, um, you know, the, when I stop any portions. So let's see. So doing inner work is needed because you want to take the thinking of your past and shift it towards your renewed perspective in order to move forward. The best part of knowing what we've done up until now and what we're allowed in our past gives us the power to shift 
towards what we really want. So that's what life, you know, how life brings us to the point where we got to dig deep. You got to know your personal history. You got to know yourself and you won't allow yourself to be depleted ever again because you know better. And when you know better, you do better. Your life can change anytime that you want it to change and you have control over your own life. And sometimes when we feel like we're out of control, we forget that we are in control. So the power in the in self, uh, the self accountability portion of your shadow work is mind blowing because a better balanced you is going to be what's going to make your life even a better quality of life. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be bad times, but you'll be mentally and emotionally, physically, and every way equipped to deal with what's going on. Let's just make sure we're good. We're good people. All right. So you are at your past. You, the past doesn't own you. You can't move on from, you have to move on from your past. It's just like when you're driving in a car, you keep it moving. But as soon as you start looking behind you, then the car starts to veer over into this direction or it hits the rumble, rumble strips or you end up might crash and you don't want to crash. So the good thing about being, you know, accountable to yourself and not being, letting your past dictate to who you are that's what helps you. So now it's time for us to do the work. The power in it is changing your life. Remember that you take the you that you are everywhere you go. So the same qualities that 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 you come out with reaction it it constantly reappears because you never let yourself heal. The only person that you can control is yourself. We'll take the car analogy even further. You're the one driving the car like Candace is driving right now. You control the speed, you control the direction, and you could dodge any actions from others that put you in danger because you're able to drive defensively. So because life is so unpredictable and you encounter people on a day-to-day -day basis, you have the choice of whether or not you draw them in or let them draw you in, or you can shut them out. Okay. But there's no surefire way to prevent dealing with other people's issues and their personal nature, especially when you have people coming into your life. So, but the only person that you can control is your car, yourself, your own vehicle, you. So understanding where it is, you got to come from that piece of us that gets fed. What they say, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. That part of you that gets, that has the most squeak to it is going to, you're going to keep attracting that stuff. And once you're a safe, when you're safe and away from the actual situation, now we can sit and put an, into perspective what other people have done to us in our lives. We got to admit Harley into the room. Yeah. Because we have no control over what people have done to us in the past. So the pain that they inflicted on you has nothing to do with you because you were the person that they chose to terrorize, inflict harm. So none of it is your fault. So if you're used to being in pain, then we tend to gravitate towards things that, wants, that we want to feel good, whether it's being in relationships, whether it's having children because we want children to love us, whether it's a drug, you know, those things that we get drawn into that because we want to feel good. So even those traumatic parts of us that wanted our aggressor to show us some kind of a mercy to some type of mercy, because these came from people that we still trusted. We have attracted who we are, which is the best of ourselves and the worst of ourselves. And we'll always remember the past. But if you allow yourself to heal, the pain will be less and less. And that pain from the past will no longer guide or trigger you to react to certain things. And that's why shadow work, inner work is so important. You'll be able to be a light to yourself and a light to others because healed people heal people. But if you're not healing or focusing on your healing, it's going to, that trigger is going to come up and you're going to be like, I don't know where that came from. That's not me for the most part of my life or for the most portion of my active life. I am a nice, calm person, an even keel person. But even the most put together person has some work to do. I mean, not everybody, no one is perfect. 
So it's important to know who you are in reference to who you were in order to be prepared for your future. Does anybody have any, let me put it in, let me look in the chat. I'm gonna make sure everybody's good. If you have any questions, please feel free. Okay, so the things in the past don't define who you are because you have survived. It's time to be happy. It's time to enjoy your happiness. So we're all dominated by parts of who we are. Somebody say that's my personality or I'm a Libra or that's how I was raised. Of course, there's scientifics to our zodiac signs and moons and stuff. But if you take it further, a lot of it is excuses why we make excuses for certain behaviors. Like, mm, we make certain excuses. So what is it? And this is what I say. It's in our DNA. And the good thing about it is that when you're aware, again, you do better. So I know everybody has heard of the conscious, subconscious, superconscious, and unconscious. So this goes into mindset. If you have the curriculum, then you can follow with me with it. So the things that we have that makes up our mindset is perception, willpower, imagination, intuition, reasoning, and our memories. So all of those things make up who we are. Our perception changes, it's, it's what you think about your life or from the perspective of your life, that's your perception. Your willpower is the action needed to push through in order to change your life. Then you got your imagination, which is the vision of your future, that you see a better future. Your intuition is the instinct behind your motivation to move forward. And your reasoning is the power of your mind to make good decisions. Your memories change the mindsets from the past and gave you the chance to reinvent yourself. So you sit there and figure out how did I get here? Because if you change your mind, you change your, you change your mindset, you will change your life. So where are you now? A lot of us are stuck, unsatisfied, trapped in obligations, um, settling for less. And then we think about where we want to actually go. You're focused on your dreams, have your goals to match. Um, I actually want um, y'all to make comments if there's like, where are you right now and where do you want to go? So you could put that in the chat to share that with me real quick. I gotta let her in the room at the same time. But where are you now in your life and where do you want to go? You can put that in the chat because I want to get a nice baseline as to where we all are in this. And it's okay if right now you're cooking or something like that, you know, it's fine. So you might not be able to touch the screen. But if you have any questions, again, put them in the chat and we can get to it towards the end or whenever we do stop. So where are you now and where do you want to go in the comments? Yeah. Yeah. I was stuck and in the process of after stuck. When I'm over, yep, we all want to be happy. Right now, I'm starting a lot of things career-wise and healing to progress. Yes. Stuck between knowing what I should be doing and actually creating a plan. Procrastination is my biggest problem. Yeah. I feel like I'm trying to figure out this life. I'm struggling when I want to end up with financial freedom and happiness. This is all stuff we all want. And I'm, I love the fact that we can all resonate with each other. And, and this is a life process. We are all co-creating together. Like this is, that's the beautiful part about, you know, getting into it, doubting myself. That's always, that's a huge problem. But it all comes from the fact that we, it's in our DNA to have these ha habits of thought. So, you know, the war within yourself, mm, yeah, me too. The war within yourself is that, you know, the habits that we have are based on the triggers from the past, the feelings from those emotions and what we felt, what we went through and how we went through it. So the parts of our lives that we touched that hot stove and we became aware of the fact that that pain is like, mm, I don't ever want to feel that again when I was a kid. Exactly. Learning my trigger. See? Exactly. The trigger, I mean, that part, like the, like say the, 
the hit, the touching the hot stove. You touch the hot stove. So now either you don't like to cook or automatically in your mind, you're like, okay, I got to grab the, the pot holders and make sure that I don't get burned again. Or you're extra vigilant in that. See? Yep. So now that you're an adult. Okay, so our conscious is how you think and how you learn. And, and I think that, that this is a part where I guess maybe we got to slow down a little bit because it's easy to get confused with your conscious, subconscious, super conscious, and your unconscious. Okay. So your conscious is how you think right now. Exactly, Harley. Exactly. It's how you think and how you learn consciously. Like you are driving right now, that is conscious. So nobody can make you think. You're literally doing whatever you're doing right now. That's you, yourself. Your subconscious is your emotional mind. So you, there's no way to really differentiate what's real or what's fake. This is the, the emotional part of you. So if you were a kid and you heard that you weren't good enough, you're fat, you're stupid, you're ugly, these are all things that you have conditioned yourself to feel from a child that brought you to where you are right now. So we have those thoughts that our subconscious is our emotional mind. So every time that we struggle from within, it's our subconscious. So now when we struggle within, it's two parts of ourselves. Our subconscious that knows it's a lie, that knows it's not the truth. Like, I'm not fat. I need to, to get into shape. But overall, hmm, I'm definitely not stupid, but I feel stupid. So like there's these things where you you got to balance your, your train of thought between what's real and what's fake. But it still has affected you in a way where you don't think that you're good enough or whatever part that we were programmed to feel within ourselves. So we're fighting a war within ourselves and it shows through the manifesting things that we have going on in our life. So whatever you manifested is based off of what you're doing right now and what your emotional mind is telling you. So that makes sense? Tell me it makes sense. Does that make sense yet? Does it? Okay, I see you nodding your head. Okay, now your unconscious. Thank y'all, thank you. Your unconscious is what makes you relive it. That's the painful movie that makes you think about the past, those nightmares that you're continually reliving. Those are the things that trigger you. And all of those things are now in your emotional mind. And you now you're, you're living it. So you're, you're driving erratically. You're pissed off. You're easily fighting. And those are those things. So that unconscious keeps that memory alive in you. And the subconscious mind is what gets triggered and then it acts out consciously. So when you're awake and this is what we're doing right now, those things are the domino effect. So if anybody's ever heard of the expression, feel the fear and do it anyway, that means that we have to push past our comfort zone. Now, we might be dreaming about something. We see in our mind all of the possibilities and the rewards that could come from it when you internalize the idea and try to make it work. See? We internalize the idea and we start the work to make it real. So everybody's like, yeah, we're going to do this work. We're going to be like, yeah, we're going to get this done. And then the real stuff starts to happen. That doubt, the anxiety, the worry, it stops you dead in your tracks and you don't wanna do it anymore. You stop moving forward. And it doesn't even matter if financial freedom or anything else has been on, or success is like right there. You killed your dream before it could get started. And it happens way more than, than we even think. Like we know something is good and we doubt ourselves. And then you get anxiety about it. But what if this happens? If what, the, what happens? Oh my goodness, what if this, what if that? The bottom line is now you're stuck. Now you're stuck. 
And no matter how many affirmations, no matter how many meditations that you do, is not going to help you if you don't take the actual steps in order to move and push past all of those things. So what will you have to do in order to get to where you want to go? That is where your super conscious comes in. So if you're trapped in a life that you don't want, you're putting all your energy into now. We're watching the news. We're hanging out with people who don't challenge you. You hang out and do all of those things that aren't making you better because you're in that comfort zone. And even though you're uncomfortably there, you're still in that comfort zone. And now you know that it's time to change your mindset because you want more now. So what about those belief systems that didn't serve you? I don't believe that my life can change. I'm stuck in my life. It's too late to change my life. There's a saying from Henry Ford. Let me see. Let me get her in. I'm sorry, y'all. I just want to make sure that people are in. There's a saying by Henry Ford that says, whatever you can or can't do, you're right. So if you're sitting there saying, I can't change my life, I'm really stuck, it's too late, guess what? You right. <laughs> and, if, and if you don't get that part, trust me, you make your mind believe those things and you will always believe those things. Let me let her in. So, yes. Okay, so regardless of what you tell yourself, if you're, you're not ready to change your life, unless you're ready to do something about your life. So that's what this is all about, doing the actual work. And it sounds like, you know, it's cliche when somebody says, believe in yourself, you can make it happen. We're not talking about hope, we're not talking about wishing, we're not talking about praying, we're talking about belief. Because if you believe, even in the Bible, it says faith without works is dead. So nobody's going to rescue you out of it. You got to do something about it. Belief, and William George said this, belief in your belief, believe in your beliefs, and that belief will create the fact. So if you set your goals and you commit to the change that you want to do, you're going to do it. Martin Luther King said, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to take the steps. So if you know what you want, it's actually time, not actually time. It is time to go after it, period. And that right there, let me make sure everybody's good, is where your super conscious comes in. Your super conscious is the part of you that actually visualizes things with us and it makes the things that we believe in real. So that's why there's people who grew up Christian and now they're Jewish. You know, like our beliefs change. That's what your super conscious is the part of the awareness of where you are, but it's the place where your creativity happens. That's how you get moving. That's how you get inspired. And it's also how you heal. So that energy to be miserable can actually change into the realization that you can move forward with your life. And you keep in mind with that then you know that it's real and you can, you can move. Keep it in mind with that. We're going to review real quick. Does everybody get the difference between the unconscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the conscious mind, and now the super conscious mind? Does everybody understand that? Put it in the chat. Okay. Good. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And that we're good. So real quick, the unconscious mind made us relive the past pain and all of the beliefs that we had in, in our life and that we get triggered from. Subconscious mind is our emotions drive us to the things that we're doing consciously, like driving a car right now, how we process things through our personality. And in our superconscious mind is where uh, we get through the pain and we're able to enjoy things, hope for things, envision things, dream things, and get inspired to do things. And that's how we will get through it with our eyes on the prize. Now, it's time to tell a new story. But first, 
the introduction to this class. That's what this is. It's an introduction. So now it's time to approach who we were in the past. And we do that briefly. So because we're not going to stay in pain. We're not going to, you know, be revisiting too much. But it's good to get through it. So shadow work helps you, one, gives you the voice that we feel that we lost. It helps us redefine our past on our own terms. It helps us forgive ourselves for the feelings that had helped us, that held us back from the future that we know we deserved. It also gives us the permission to move forward and it helps us be ready to leave the past behind and to move into the life that we really want. So, mind your vibration. Now, when we say we have high vibrations, low vibe, we already know now that the difference between having a high vibration and a low vibration. The lower you can never match the higher you. So you have to become who you want to be and the rest of your life is going to follow that. That's big. So, questions. Does anyone have any questions? Unmute yourself and ask the question because we're just going to revisit the past briefly. Um, and the first question is, when was the first time you told yourself no? When was the first time that you ever told yourself no? And it was something you really wanted, but you told yourself no. Hi, LaTanya. Yeah. So put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and tell us when was the first time that you ever said no, Malia, the day after graduating? Was it something I don't think I've ever told myself no? Candace, you've told yourself no before. Whenever it's been time for you to speak up, whenever it's been time to speak up and there's certain things that you've held yourself back from saying it, Yeah, but the first time you ever told yourself no. Mm -hmm. And those, those telling yourself no comes from the part where maybe you feel like you don't deserve it. Maybe it's those times that you really wanted to do something with your life, but you held yourself back because of those things that you really, really want you don't go for it. And that, that first time could be two years ago, a year ago. You know, maybe it wasn't something that was like right after high school. But we're all reached a point right now where if we tell ourselves no, what kind of fighting against ourselves with the no? You know, it's something that you really do. And whatever excuse comes up why we can't do it for ourselves is something that we're using. Like, um, I, there was a guy that I know who keeps saying that, oh, since I have my son, I can't move or I can't do this or I can't do that. And in the grand scheme of things, you already know the pluses and the minuses to why you want to make the moves that you want to make. And if you use outside things as an excuse why you shouldn't go for what it is that you want, you're going to start resenting that reason. So if that reason is your kids, you're going to start resenting your kids. If that's something within your, like your parents said you can't do it, you're going to start resenting your parents because that's a no. And we're not talking about when you was a kid and they were telling you something for your own good. <laughs> I'm talking about times that you held yourself back from something that you really wanted to do with your own life and you didn't take the chance for whatever reason. That's a no. So now, shadow work can be painful. And there's, a, there's certain ways that I do shadow work. And if you know, like inside of the group, I put a couple of things, like write a letter to your 10-year-old self 
And that's how we do it. Like going through our former selves, just what, what I do with my clients, personal clients. See, that's a whole different life path, Imani. That's a whole different life path. So, you know, telling yourself no from a, a different life path, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. When are times that you wanted to say no that you didn't say no? That's another one. That's another one. When you wanted to to say, you know, when you wanted to say yes to something, but you always tell yourself no for it. That's also a no. Um, when we write letters to our former selves, we usually approach. Yeah, it is. Girl. <laughs> not trying to make anything about myself there's been times when i'm like okay i really need a pair of sneakers and i'm like you know what but my son needs some sneakers or my son needs this or my son needs that i will literally put all my stuff back for myself and get it for him done it so i understand that part of it it's, it is and then you be sitting there walking around with sneakers that's talking in holy underwear and your kids walking around looking spanking new all the time. Mm-hmm. Feet hurting. Word. It is. Because we don't tell them no. <laughs> and I tell ourselves yes. So um, the reason why I always say for, you know, when you revisit the past, to not do it a lot. Because again, we're not going to continue to go backwards or use the past as an excuse why we can't move forward. So when I say to write a letter to your 10 year old self, that's usually the time when you can actually remember. See, look, I gotta get some new drawers too, girl. But, um, yeah, look, this is in the class, but, um, yeah, this is, when I say uh, to your 10 year old self, like either you got your first bike or you heard your parents arguing for the first time, it, you know, like these little pieces right there, or you're, you know, you got traumatized by something. You saw, you know, a movie that scared you and it triggered something in you. You know, I think my first movie that scared me was Poltergeist, Poltergeist. I know mostly I don't even remember that movie, but I like the original Poltergeist scared the crap out of me. And it was like, you know, those things, but I wouldn't like saying, I, you know, I apologize to, to that 10 year old self of me. It's more like, what did you feel? How did you feel? Because your painful past can't be something that dictates your future life. So when I say write a letter to yourself, yeah, original Exorcist was crazy when you say my dear my blah 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 self so you don't have to piece it like that it could be 10 years old it could be 18 years old it could be 25 years old i'm 42 so it'll be you know my 30s um but an event in your life that sticks out to you what you learned about it and how you responded to the world after it because of it how it affected you to your now. That part of you that needs a hug from the you now to that you from back then. So if you have the actual book, um, the, the curriculum, there'll be a part of it that says, what is a word or a sentence that would describe your 10 year old self? So, if you wanted to, matter of fact, what I'm gonna do is put the link to the book in the chat because, yeah, just in case you were interested in getting the book. The book is actually $25 until Saturday. So yeah, and then after Saturday, it'll be back to $59.99 because it's an actual curriculum. And the curriculum is, from your past self to the second part of it is um, friendships and relationships. 
So how you let your friends treat you, your friends that you had a falling out with, the people who bring out the best in you, the relationships that you get into, how you love, why you love. Then the third part is parenting. So if you ever want children, you know, there's certain things that you might want to address as a parent um, and how you talk to your kids and how you discipline your kids. And then the fourth part of this discussion is um, moving forward in your life, like how you're making plans for the rest of your life. Um, not the rest of your life, but the first day of the next day of your life. And there's a part in the book that gives you, I think, three months or 12 weeks. Yeah, I think that's 12 weeks um, to have a habit. You know, like they, they say it only takes, um, you know, a certain amount of time to actually make a plan and stick to it. So that's the actual work, the introduction to, that's what this is, the introduction to shadow work. So if you want to join me in the class, the actual class on Saturday, it is $99. Um, and if you're not ready to like do the actual class, that's cool. Um, I'm gonna, I'm recording this portion so that the replay is available at the time that you actually want to um, actually address it. But now is time for questions. If anyone has a question, where is gonna be available the class? The class is on Zoom. We're gonna do it together on Zoom. Oh, the replay. Oh, I'm gonna have, I'll, I'll announce where it is. Um, I have everybody here, um, their email. So when the replay is actually available, then I definitely will put it up. Um, the, excuse me, the replay to this is gonna be, you know, available. I'm, I'll even make it a watch, a watch party. I'm not saying that this was like, yay, exciting, but this is literally the introduction to shadow work and why it's actually important. Was any questions um, towards actually, you know, like the work or about the class or anything else, because after, um, after Saturday, the class is actually $59 per portion. So family, you know, like the kids, your relationships and friendships, this is actual work. So we're going to be, um, delving into the material we're going to be sharing. Um, and it's like a hot seat. You know how we do um, regular Zooms on that night, the nights that we do Zooms? We're literally gonna be sitting in the hot seat and actually working together on the actual material. So this is like, if you ever got stuck, Darton, where do we start by connect, correcting the doubt and self-hate? By looking in the mirror and having your super conscious step up your superconscious has to step up. You got to start telling yourself that, no, this is not how I want to feel anymore. And then when you actually do the work and, and say, you know, and go into the, um, like where the book has it, where you talking to yourself, um, your 25 year old self, when you're talking about um, things in your life that you really want to like, I, I need to stop this. So you've identified the part of you that you want to stop. So knowing that you've seen yourself from the past is, it's a huge way to release your past trauma and those false beliefs that have held you back in your life. So again, if, if you've said to yourself, I'm, I don't feel smart, I'm stupid. You already know that that's a lie. That's a lie based off of unconscious behavior from your past. So at the time you were conscious dealing with it from your parents or other kids or teachers or anybody in your past that has drilled it in your head that you're not smart or made you feel unsmart because that's what your, un your subconscious told you back then. And now you're unconscious when it starts replaying that in your head and it, all of it manifests into what you're actually doing to yourself right now. So if you're sitting there at home and you just feel stuck, 
that's because you're listening to the past you because only thing that you can do to change your life is actually change your life. So everything that you've gone through in your past has everything to do with where you are right now, but only you and your superconscious have everything to do with your future. So that's how you correct the doubt, the self-hate, all of those things by reprogramming your superconscious conscious into believing new beliefs because all of those things are perception of what it was in the past. So your perception back then was that you were stupid or that you couldn't do anything or you were lazy or you don't want anything or you're going to be just like your father or like your mother or you, you're going to do this or you're going to do that type of thing that was negative and it really messed your head up because a part of that is like, damn, I really feel like that. Yes, you are on automatic. You know, like that's, you get on auto autopilot. You ever feel like you're on autopilot and just doing stuff to do it with no emotion? Yes, you are, what do they call that? Cruising. And the only thing that changes is time because you're like, damn, it's already Wednesday and I haven't done anything for myself. Yep. I've, I'm, um, I'm opening it up to anybody who wants to like visit, you know, actually ask a question, but I wanted to leave you with this. The power is in you, is in your actual no. So anything that people have done to us, that we've taught them how to treat us because of how we feel about ourselves inside. We get to redefine our relationships with the way to assess how other people treat us. The power is in no. No, you're not gonna take advantage of me. No, you're not gonna disrespect me. No, you're not gonna disregard my feelings. No, I'm not gonna not pursue my dreams because I feel like they're out of reach. There's no to not believing in yourself because other people don't see your vision. It's time to let go. So does anybody have anything to add as far as the, any questions? Because I, again, when, when you don't have any questions, it ends. So does anyone have any questions for me or questions about this? I'm opening it up for everyone. Do you feel like you still have to do shadow work? Me? Like, do you, yeah. <laughs> Like, are you like done doing it or is it a never ending process? It's a never ending process. It's not like I got a degree in shadow work and it says, Birdie, you're finished with that part. You can never, ever have to revisit that because there'll be certain things that I miss in my own personal work that I'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? I need to work on that. I think um, my question that I have is like, how do you um, set boundaries? Because I think that that's why it's kind of like a never ending cycle because you always have to repeatedly be setting boundaries because you know, you're becoming a better you. So that requires like new boundaries. So how would you set boundaries without it being or sounding, you know, disrespectful or coming off road or coming off, you get me? Like, that's something that I struggle with. It's like, I don't know how to say it because I know that how I say it, might hurt someone's feelings but i know that's not really none of my concern too but you know that's yeah that's what my question would be like how do you set those healthy like boundaries without it offending anybody else you got it the power is in your no you got to think about how you yeah, want I like to. i like when you said that yeah the, the power is in your no you got to think about is, is is you saying yes to them saying no to yourself you know what i'm saying like, yeah, the shadow work, yeah, yeah, you have to make sure that you're not saying no to yourself by saying yes to someone else. So if your parents or anybody else is like, I need you to do this. Okay, if it's something that's within your purview that you could actually just deal with, then okay, by all means. I'm not saying no to myself. Am I saying no to myself? Now, if I, it starts conflicting with how I feel about something that's really important to me, 
it's gonna have to be no. I'll give you an example. I went, uh, yesterday was my brother's, we celebrate my brother's birthday. Today is my brother's actual birthday. But yeah, I'm here and I love y'all. So we celebrated his birthday yesterday. He understood. And we were like, um, he wanted to go to his friend's house. So we were all supposed to go to this guy's house. And I got there and I was like, I don't want to be here. I know it's your birthday. I love you, but um, I'll wait in the car. Cause the guy was no good. He was no good. And um, yeah, I was just like, I'm not doing anything else that I don't feel comfortable with. Because when you go against your intuition, usually you, you know, like you should not be going against your intuition. That inspiration, that, I mean, intuition is what speaks to the things that you do. Once you start going against it, that's when you start second guessing yourself. Do I want to do this? Do I? No, you know you don't want to be here. You know you don't want to do this. So, yes, you don't go through things. Go through with things just because you said yes initially either. Your intuition is telling you, nah, I don't even want to finish this. I don't want to go here. I don't want to be there. I could turn around at any time in my life and be out. And you got to give yourself those permissions because you this is a no that shouldn't be negotiable it shouldn't be okay let's see candace you said when are you doing when are you doing shadow work but don't want to talk about certain things do you skip over or work through um sometimes like right now me as a mom in this stage in my life I compartmentalize things like there's certain things that I really know for a fact that I got to deal with. Um, you know, like my son's father, it's, in, it's important. I have to, I have to deal with him because I have a son and our stuff is actually, you know, it's active. So I'm like, okay, what do I got to work on with that? How did I get to the point of me being able to say, you know what, I'm not going to let, uh, how those things are about it cloud what I'm doing at with our son. I'm not going to be spiteful. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to sit there and argue with you on things because it's not healthy. I know for a fact that I desire this kind of relationship with my son's father. The relationship that I want with him is this what's best for our son. So the path is there. That's what we have. And the only person that I can control in any situation is myself. Now, if he wants to be who he is, that's fine. But that's where my boundaries come in. Either the answer is going to be no, or they'd be like, you know what? We could compromise on that. But other than that, I'm not saying no to myself. And I'm always going to do what's best for my son. And I'm not going to put how I feel over my son if that makes sense does that make sense yes some people do write it down and they burn it that it, it's no matter what you do with your with your shadow work like if you you know download the book and actually do it like a journal or like a like a like a uh what do you call it you could do like a journal or a diary type of thing but if you want to write it on a piece of paper and set your intentions or, or write the past or put it in a letter and set it on fire, that's good. It's, yeah, that's good. What do you mean by not putting how you feel over yourself? Oh, so you know how you, you're like, nah, I really want to do this. And that's how I feel feel about it like say um i'm mad at you so i'm not gonna let you see your son this weekend you don't do stuff like that if this is his time that he's supposed to see our son unless i know he's putting them in some kind of danger how i feel gotta be in the background versus what it is it is being petty but this is what i'm saying doing shadow work will have you out of pettiness 
Now, there's fun petty, and then there's petty petty that's like holding you back in life. So there's a, diff there's a degree of, of what you need to actually get past. So when you're like, you can't put, you have to not put how you feel over yourself or for the, the betterment of a situation, then that's what you, you can't, you can't do that. You know, like you really got to think about those things. But yeah, um, burning the paper afterwards, is just, it's just symbolic. It's like when you go to those, um, you know, those tributes to people where they put the lamp, they light the lamp and they either they put it on water or they let it go in the air. And it's like, ah, uh, we're letting it go. Yeah. You can write those things down and you burn it, but you know, it's, you know, it's just like those lights in the lamps and inside of, you know, your crystals or whatever type of ways that people do that kind of work. They're symbols. It's a symbol of what it is, but the inner work doesn't go into a rock or, you know, into the life of a paper. You wrote it down. So now you're aware of it. Now it's time for you to be like, you know what? This is not me right now. This is not me anymore. But you got to be clear about where it is and leave it there. So that's, that's doing shadow work. And Candace asked me, when did I get into shadow work? Um, I've been a coach, a lifestyle coach for over 20 years. And I started doing shadow work with clients because it was like, um, it started when I became a book coach. So there's been people who want to write a book, but when they want to write a book, it's usually based off of what they've been in their life. So everybody's like, girl, you can write a book about me. You can write a book about my life, or I want to write a book about my life. So it was like, okay, when I'm teaching someone how to write their own book, I always say, why are you writing this book? Because we're not going to hustle backwards. Are you going to write this book so it could be a bestseller? Or are you writing it to get it out of your system? Or are you writing it for your business? Like, what are you writing this book for? And nine times out of ten, people want to write the book to get it out of their system. And that's great. That's good. It's good. It's therapy. It's self-therapy. Because I believe in self-love and self-help. It's the best help. Self-help is the best help. Self-love is the best love. That's, you know, and then you can grow from all of that stuff. So when I started as a book coach, it, it ended up being work because I'm now helping you get through a lot of the things that you've been dealing with in your life. And even though it's not like, you know, like it's what I do, it's still not, it's still hard work when you're dealing with other people and a lot of things that, that they're stuck in. And, you know, it gets to be a lot. And when people are like, I'm an empath. Now, there's two types of, of empaths. There's the empath that just absorbs energy. And then there's empaths that, um, that, doesn't, absorb, that doesn't absorb energy into themselves. So um, I'm one of those empaths that um, they call them a power empath. So when I could, I, I could sit there and talk about your problems, your issues at any point in your life is not my life. And that's one of my cardinal rules. Your life is not my life. So um, it doesn't, it, it, it drains you only if you're processing it as if it's your own uh, emotions. So it's okay to be empathic or show empathy and it helps you resonate with people. But when you start to take on that energy, it doesn't do well for you and it might end up triggering you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. That right, reminded me of like, I, I don't like, it's a lot going on. So I'm from the Bronx. So it's like, it's a lot going on out here. Never and is you get what I'm saying exactly how you said there's certain empaths like who absorb energy and that's something that I had to really like you know become aware of like I can't let other people's energy affect minds and that's one thing too I, f I feel like a lot of people when they see that other people are going through things that are unfortunate they make themselves feel those things and it's like sometimes you get me like it may sound messed up but you got to preserve yourself a little bit and just 
I don't want to hear that right now. Like I'm getting to that point where it's like, all right, I like, is that boundary? Like I can't, I don't have the space to hear all of that right now. So it's like, mm-hmm. that's what that made me remind of. That's yeah. When I was a kid, we had, you know, like, and I'm going to say this is like a blanket thing. When we're a kid and there's a family meal going on and I'm good. I'm done. I don't want to eat anymore. And they make you stay at the table or, you know, like, eh. I pay attention to things like that. Now, when I don't want to be at the table, I will not be at the table. We eat together as a family. Okay. We sit here, we eat as a family. If I'm not hungry, I can't eat. You could put a paper towel over it and I'll eat it later on. And now I realize that as a, as a mom now that I can't force feed my child. If he's not hungry, then are you okay? Of course you got to make sure that he's good. But if he's literally not hungry, we go all sit there at the table initially. But if he's like, can I be excused right now? I'm like, if you're not hungry, then you know. Yeah, you got to respect his boundaries. Cause at the end of the day, he's still a, you know, a person or human, like he going to grow up to be an adult and you want to, you know, you don't want nobody who's backed up with emotion. Like you should be able to express how you feel and not feel apologetic about it. Like, and that's why we all messed up. So it's kind of like for our kids, it's like, we got to just be real with them. I don't have no kids myself. That's why I like, I skimmed through the book and that like, I, I don't have no kids myself, but I know like it has to be something completely different. Cause of course your patient get tested, but those kids observe everything. They absorb everything. Like, Mm -hmm. and you and a lot of times we don't get a chance to and like I'm as parents like unless you actually planned on having kids even the people who planned on having kids did not think about how they were going to discipline their kids you know what I'm saying or you know when it's time to actually get to the point where your child did something like real messed up now what are we going to do you know, like, oh my goodness, am I going to revisit how it is or how am I going to react to these things? Because sometimes you get triggered and there's a time when you, I mean, there's been a time when I've seen kids hit their parents. And I'm like, well, what, what school is this from? And then we got parents that are cursing their kids out in the store. And you're like, wow, how did that happen? Like, there's certain things that you're like, now you're aware of. And it's like, oh, I would never do that to my child. But if the situation comes up, how are you reacting? And that's another thing that we address in the parent part. That's the third part of the actual class. How are you as a parent? In regards to how your parents were into the parent that you want to actually be, um, how you co-parent, all of those other things. So, yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? No way. Well, that's it, y'all. That is it. So I just wanted to to say that was the the thing. Thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Um, I hope that it was informative and yeah, um, if you want to, you know, take the class on Saturday, of course you're welcome, baby. Yeah. If, if you want to take the actual class, then yeah. I mean, again, I'm going to have the replay to this available and I will let you know exactly when it is available, but yeah. Shadow work is important. And I'm going to have the, I'm going to put the link to the book in the group and send the link in the email. And um, yeah, it's $25 until Saturday. So yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. So again, does anybody have any questions before we end? Yeah, that's right. That's all you can do. Continue to work on yourself. Like this is, again, this is not a diploma. You don't get, you don't get a degree in it. It's not going to be like, there might be something that happens. (laughs) I love y'all too.
but yeah, it'll be, you know, times when we'll be like, you know, triggered and it's okay to, to be able to address it mentally before we react consciously. So we don't let our subconscious and unconscious rule our conscious. We got the super conscious that wants us to be better, do better. And in a way for us to actually move forward from the why into our how. That's how we, that's how we do it. Yes, I am magic.outlook.com. Yes, yes. Shadow work is admitting that you need help sometimes. There's a lot of people that really need some help um yeah that need a lot of that we need help and i think a part of it of not saying um asking for help is a, another form of um work that we need to do within ourselves because like say me as a businesswoman now there's a lot of things that I don't know how to do, but since I be sitting there like trying to figure out how to do it myself, you waste a lot of time. Some of that, you know, taking a whole bunch of classes that you don't really need is a form of procrastination. It's like, oh, I got this class. Oh, I got this. Or I got this coming up. I really can't do it. Exactly. Go ahead, Harley. Get your drawers. But yeah. It's, it's a part of, of, of shadow work, of to ask, to be able to ask. That's putting ego aside. That's putting a lot of things to the side that you, you're like normally pride or not, I don't want to bother anybody. All of those things stem from not feeling good enough or, you know, wanting to, to, to ask for help. Like sometimes you need help. I mean, you know, it's not for others to look and say, okay, let me take that off of your hands. No, sometimes you got to be like, yo, I need help right now. Yep. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay. Any other questions, y'all? All right, my loves. So y'all have a great night. Thank you for letting me take an hour and some change of time. And if you want to do some more work, then let me know. Everybody. Birdie. Yes. Did you want it, this meeting to go on longer than it, than it is? No, I just want to make sure that everybody's good. It doesn't matter for me. Like if... If y'all wanted to discuss something or whatever, then I'll turn off the recording. <laughs> it won't be a part of the the class. But if it's pertaining to the class, then I'll keep the recording on. So if it's something personal, that's different. I need a lot of shadow work to be done. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Danielle. But yeah, if anybody needs to, you need to discuss anything, I'll stop the recording. Just say discuss in the chat, whatever you want to do. You want to discuss if it's shadow work related then uh then ask it ask it now thank you candace i feel good about it i want i wanted because that's the thing you can't say you need shadow work and then don't know how to do it and then get stuck because you know it needs to get done you know you really want to do it but you know not knowing how it's like being in a hospital and knowing you got a boo-boo but nobody's helping you that's the purpose of this whole thing so that's why I said the, the, the book is $25. It's something that if you just want to be guided into it, that's cool. Yeah. So I am magic that outlook. I'll make sure that I email you, Claudia.
But yeah. So everybody knows how to reach me if you need me. I'm gonna take everybody off of me, I think. So if anybody has any questions, y'all going once, going twice, I'm gonna end it. Y'all better say something. You got my attention. I'm gonna end the recording.